Gospel of St. John, the 13th chapter, verses 31 through 35. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord. Christ. Next, the hymn of the day. You may be seated. You may be seated.
What was once unclean is now clean. What was once unacceptable is now acceptable. The unclean Gentiles are now clean. The Gentiles are now acceptable. The wind has changed directions. So Peter, without prejudice, goes with the three Gentiles to see Cornelius in Caesarea, a couple of days' journey. The Spirit guides them to Caesarea. And the magnitude of this story cannot be underestimated, for our history as a community of Jesus' disciples involves change and changing directions. The Spirit changes directions, moves through time and space to bring the first Gentiles into the fold. Cornelius was the first Gentile convert. Not only Cornelius, but his entire household as well. Cornelius was already a guard-fearing man and who gave to the widows, orphans, and who abided by Jewish rituals and traditions and prayed religiously. But he needed to receive one more message. Just like Peter, who was prepared for the, vision, the Spirit's vision, Cornelius was prepared for the message. The message is, Jesus is the one ordained by God to be judge over the living and dead. To everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins. With this message, the Holy Spirit was poured out on all of her. Thus, Cornelius, the Gentile centurion, and his household received the gift of the Holy Spirit and were made clean and whole. Of course, when change happens, uh, there is usually a fly in the ointment. From our story, the Spirit had one more miracle to create. The conservative party of Jewish disciples in Judea were in a quandary and wondered how the law-abiding Peter could defile himself and dine with Cornelius, the unclean and common Roman centurion. But Peter put the responsibility, or the responsibility, why? With the Holy Spirit. He proceeded to tell the story of visions and revelations. These visions and revelations were the signs that the party needed to hear from the Spirit in order to confirm that this new law of love, wherein Gentiles can receive forgiveness of sins, was actually true. And as we know, the party listened. They heard, were convinced, became still, and then glorified God. What a change in direction. And for us, especially today, Especially today, we need this great story. This great story that all things are possible. Because upon this beautiful earth, here and abroad, there is worry, there is war, confusion, uncertainty, despair, hunger, and devastation. We need today's reassurance that the Spirit is here and can come to anyone, at any time, at any place. The Spirit will bring forth the healing, love, compassion, goodness, and the beautiful. The Spirit comes alongside us and renews us in our belief and hope, faith, and love, the fruits of the Spirit. Indeed, we can be assured that the Spirit is moving, moving now across our land like a wind. We are not alone. Be ready, be willing. The Spirit will fill our sails and take us to still waters. We will reach the harbor. We will reach the promised land. And then we will rejoice in one voice. Praise be to the Father. Praise be to the Son. And praise be to the Holy Spirit. Now and forever. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your heart.